Hello Wobblies, welcome to Wobbly Otter Outdoors. I'm Chris and in this episode we're taking a mid-2020 hindsight look at emergency preparedness. Early on when the pandemic was just breaking news, a commenter asked what we were doing to prepare for it. At that time our emergency plan was to have at least 30 days of food and water and we had at least that so we felt pretty good about being able to survive a complete lockdown for a good length of time. In previous videos we've covered our long-term water storage and also our emergency water filtration plans so I'm not going to cover water in this video. This video is mainly going to be about food preparedness. I'm going to share some things that we do, some things to consider, and some things that have changed and that we're changing to prepare going forward. When you're looking at having a good reserve of food, there's two basic types of or categories of food to consider. One is what's available off the shelf at the grocery store, how long it will last, and then also is long-term storage, which you can buy in bulk that will last much longer than what you can buy on the grocery store shelf. The product, if kept sealed, will last generally to the best if used by date, no problem. If you have it longer than that, it may still be edible, but it may not taste as good. And then at some point, you really have to start watching spoilage. Any dehydrated product that has fat in it won't be able to have as long term of storage as one that doesn't. The non-fat powdered milk will last for about two years and the whole milk powdered will last for about one year. When it comes to canned goods and sealed packaged goods, they will usually last one to two years. Things like packaged instant potatoes will last about a year. Pasta, about a year or two. Refrigerated butter, the shelf life of it seems to be right around six months. Now let's discuss long-term storage foods. There are quite a few companies that specialize in long-term storage food provisions. ReadyWise, it used to be called Wise Company, Mountain House, Augustine Farms, and My Patriot Supply are just a few. Of those, the ones we are using are ReadyWise, Mountain House, and Augustine Farms. We've been a longtime user of Mountain House meals that are made for camping. They're usually one or two servings that you can prepare directly in the pouch. These have a shelf life, these particular two have a shelf life of 30 years. When you purchase an emergency food pail that has a variety of meals in it, and each will have anywhere from four to eight servings usually. They usually aren't the one to two servings prepackaged meals. For all the dehydrated meals, usually all you have to have to rehydrate them is water. For the emergency kit meals, you will need some sort of pan to prepare them in. While dehydrated meals will rehydrate best with heated or boiling water, best they'll rehydrate faster. You can rehydrate them with just a soak in water. It will take longer, but you can still rehydrate them that way if you need to in an emergency situation. Because these packages have so many servings in them, it might work best for you to half them or divide them up and prepare them only as you need them. That way you don't have prepared food that you have to worry about preserving that may spoil. Inside number 10 cans is another way that you can buy food for long-term storage. Again, this is dehydrated dried food. These particular two are green peas and butter. Come back to the butter in a moment. So that's the two general categories of food, off the shelf of the grocery store and long-term food storage that's ready to rehydrate. For our emergency preparedness, it's just the two of us. It's just Bill and I. So what we do is we try to keep our pantry fluffed up. And what I mean by that is we have at least 80 cans of canned food, vegetables, canned meats, and things like that. On top of that, we have things like flour, pasta, rice, beans, dried beans, things that we can use that don't have to be refrigerated. Those are the things that are in our pantry and we rotate through. And so we're using them and keeping that stock replenished with fresh materials. That way we're always sure to have food in there that will be good for at least one to two years. Beyond that, for long-term storage, we now have three pails of dehydrated foods. We have two of the ReadyWise pails that each have 120 meals in them. 
And then we have one of the Augustine Farm pails that is a lunch and dinner pail that has 92 servings in it. The Augustine Farms pail is a new addition. There are some things we've learned during the pandemic that we needed to better prepare for. The biggest one revolves around flour. Because for an extended time everyone was at home and baking more, flour became scarce. We had plenty, but of course it's natural human nature when anything is scarce, you become concerned. So at the time of this video, which is August 2020, flour is back in stock in the grocery stores for the most part in the United States. For all the food preparing that we had done previously, we hadn't focused on just flour. That's one of the things we're changing. So now in addition to keeping flour in the pantry, and also we often keep some in the refrigerator so it will last longer, we've also purchased bulk wheat and bulk corn and we have a grinder. This pail of wheat berries is from Augustin Farms and if stored in a cool, dry, out of the sunlight area, it'll last for about 30 years. And it is in a food grade pail. In this bucket, it's an aftermarket bucket that we purchased. It's also food grade. We purchased 40 pounds of dent corn, dried field corn, And we have put it in two different buckets and sealed these. And these will last a good 20 years if we keep them sealed and in a cool, dry, out of the sun location. Having the bulk wheat and corn will enable us to have flour very long term. The current situation really made it hit home with me the importance of flour because above all else, if you have flour and water, you can make something to eat. You can survive. If you have salt, you can make it taste good. If you have a little baking powder, you can make it fluffy. You can make any manner of bread with some sort of flour, water, and salt. And ultimately, that can help you in a very dire survival situation. Everything else, the canned foods, the dehydrated meals, those all become at that point basically a luxury because they have a mixture of different types. They have carbohydrates, proteins, they have your vitamins, they have all sorts of things that you need and that taste wonderful. So in addition to flour, the other things we're fluffing up in our pantry and in our storage are salt, baking powder, and rice. Those were the things that I found that I felt concerned about not having as far as a sustenance. When it comes to something that I would consider more of a luxury item when it comes to food, it's butter. I was so concerned that we were going to run out of butter. As mentioned, butter will last up to six months in the refrigerator. I usually have a pound of butter that isn't opened and then a package that we're using. So now I'm keeping a few more packages in the refrigerator, just cycle them through, just like we do everything in the pantry, just add to the back, move to the front, use off of the front. And long term wise, we now have a number 10 can of butter. The can says it is 204 servings. And just as mentioned earlier, because butter is a fat, this can will keep for about 10 years, as opposed to the 25 to 30 years that most dehydrated food products will keep. For example, this number 10 can of peas will keep for 30 years. For us, emergency food prepping is a continuous cycle. In the pantry, we're using the food that is also our long-term storage, our one to two year long-term storage. And that's something that you can add to and start out small and it will grow and only come to benefit you. So it isn't that you have to have a large outlay of funds in order to start prepping with food. That's a great way to get started. Especially if you're in a small household, purchasing a few mountain house meals or something like that is a way to get started. Now when you get the one to two serving mountain house meals as compared to a big pail that has a lot of different meals in it, these are going to be more expensive per serving. So there are 72 hour kits, one week kits, um, one month kits. Usually they come in a pail of some sort that's similar to this. And those will have a smaller price tag on them as well because 
their smaller packages. So that's a way you can enter into the extended long-term storage, your 25, 30-year emergency preparedness, without having a great outlay of money there too. When you start looking at things like grains, the corn, the wheat, the oats, things that you might use to grind and make flour, the thing that stood out to me for those regarding price is that often you're ending up paying a lot for the pail itself. When you look at a food grade storage bucket, they're usually, the cheapest one I could find was around $13, $15. Um, easily it can go up to $36 for a food grade pail. And there's different kinds. This pail, we purchased what's called a gamma lid. And it's a screw top lid that has a rubberized silicone seal, not a rubberized, a silicone seal around the top. So when you screw it tight, it is an airtight seal. And the reason we did this is that we can use out of the container and then still feel comfortable that it's well sealed after we've closed it back up. Most of the pails that you buy your grain already in, like this one from Augustine Farms, has a pull tab that you pull around the outer edge that makes it possible to open the top lid. And those can be harder to open and close, not as easy as a screw top lid. And when you're looking for a place to store these longer term items, space can be a challenge to find. Consider putting them under a bed in the back of a closet. Places like that that are out of the way and also in a temperature regulated or even better a relatively cool place that are out of direct sunlight. That will help them last longer, plus it won't take up a lot of your living space. In the description below we'll put links to these products, especially the more long-term storage items. So I hope this information is helpful in some way. And if you have any questions or comments or things that you have found that benefited you, please leave those in the comments below. And if there's a luxury item, like mine was butter, that you found yourself just craving and didn't want to be without, leave that in the comments too. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching Wobbly Otter. We love you and hope all your tomorrows are bright. Until next time.